Uh, I mean, it's a um, it's a pleasure to uh, to to be here, and um, actually, I mean, um, what I'm going to present is uh, let's say it's a little different from uh, previous presentations in the sense that um, I am more in a, in the research environment. Uh, so uh, what we are doing is just to test some of the ideas that you have been uh, discussing now. So we want to see if actually um, this question of big data is or not useful to. Um, uh, and build some of the of the questions about mobility in, in Europe and what we can say about uh, tourism in particular with this uh, with this kind of, inf of information. No? So as as Dirk was saying, this is um, work that has been done in uh, Atifisk, that is in uh, in Mallorca, and actually we, there we are also suffering this these uh, issues that you were talking about uh, uh, overcrowding and uh, overpopulation of tourists and so on. sometimes uh, I mean actually one of the of the questions that bring me to this uh, to these questions was the the, the the feeling of locals or the residents that actually there was an overcrowded in the in the island. No, I mean, think that actually the mobility in the in Mallorca is very very limited, and you will see later also Ibiza and uh, Formentera. No, so it's very small pieces of land, and then you have a huge amount of tourism and a lot of mobility inside. Because apart from uh, let's say to visit uh, the cities, you also have the the beaches that are all over the island. So uh, many tourists. Uh, and rent cars and move all, all over uh, around and of course this uh, sometimes creates uh, creates conflicts with the with the residents that have to take these roads uh, for usual life no um, just to show you a little um, i mean kind of motivation of uh, why we started uh, in, in here uh, i mean most of the of the information and and in here it has come out uh, several times in in tourism is obtained uh, via surveys uh, okay so uh, this is just a copy of a survey that i found on on internet about uh, about tourism uh, but the um, the important thing is uh, that this is usually uh, something that has some pros and some contrasts. No? So uh, some of the pros is uh, uh, some questions that has been already mentioned. So for instance, you can ask people, so what do you think? And of course, you cannot say that, uh, I mean, online, you can, I mean, you can do, do service on, uh, by the phone as, as the people from Croatia was doing, uh, but online with big data, you cannot get this information easily, let's say, no, because uh, uh, the big data sources, uh, and I will focus on one of them later, uh, are not prepared for this. I prepare for other, other issues and a kind of lateral way a question uh, the tourism or tourist satisfaction can appear in, in this uh, in this information no? um, you can also uh, correct biases because you can uh, interview the people that uh, that you want. So you can select by age, by gender, uh, by economical uh, um, uh, level, and, and all the discussions to have a kind of unbiased sample sample of the population. No? Uh, and uh, of course, you can uh, know, as I was discussing before, so you can ask the, these people as much things as you want because you can have a very well controlled uh, sample of the of the population. Which are the contrasts? Well, uh, I mean the the person from the 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 representative from Croatia, uh, from the Croatia Observatory, uh, as uh, said before, something like uh, they did uh, an interview of, of 1,000 people and uh, on the phone, and this cost is around 10,000 euros. Uh, we did in a previous European project uh, uh, another survey about mobility in Barcelona. And uh, actually, this was uh, also about 1,000 uh, valid interviews. In this case, mean, that means a very, very strict and biased policy to get uh, information on mobility. And the cost was 10 times more. So uh, this is an idea of, of the cost of, uh, of these surveys, especially the ones that have to do with mobility, because you have to ask a lot of things about uh, which kind of transportation you take and, uh, and when you do this and all these questions. Uh, so they are very, very expensive. And the other question is the difficult update. So uh, preparing the survey in Barcelona took us uh, almost a year between uh, the selection of people from the census, doing the interviews, and, and finally uh, processing the data. It's a very slow process. So you have to, uh, I mean, for instance, in, in the case of, of uh, Mallorca, I know that the, the regional government had, has it on all the time. So essentially, every time that you appear in the airport, you may have someone that tries to interview you. <laughs> hey, what, what, what is your satisfaction about this uh, destination? No? So this is uh, something that uh, takes a lot of time and a lot of resources. And then the, there is the question of what you can say about uh, um, this with big data. No? So uh, what we try to do in this case is um, because we were worried about the mobility at the continental level. Okay, so And in this case, um, it's very hard to access uh, any source of big data that gives you the full picture of Europe. Uh, because think that, uh, I mean, we have, when we work also in Barcelona, we're also working with uh, mobile phone records. And the mobile phones are 
very good, are very detailed, but typically they are concentrated in very small areas because uh, country by country, the companies are different and the information that you get is very localized typically. You know? So very detailed, but very localized. The only one that we found that uh, could be used in uh, the uh, continental level with data open, okay, because that's the important thing, <laughs> was Twitter. And, and I'm saying why it's the important thing, well, yes, because of course you have uh, Facebook, uh, you have Instagram. Uh, all of those are also at the continental level, uh, but it has the bad side that the data is uh, is, pr is, um, is private, and, well, private. It's, uh, it's privately owned, let's say, and it's not shared openly. In the case of Twitter, by definition and also by the philosophy of the, tw of the tool, um, all the information that is produced is shared openly. Okay, so uh, this gives us some kind of, um, uh, let's say, of, of a hint of that you can really access information all over the all over the continent. But of course, there are differences and. This map shows the, where they are. No? So this is a map of the NAS3. So we are talking about provinces, regions, landers. Uh, um, well, actually, I think in Germany is a little below lander. Lander should be the, the, the next level. Uh, it's NAS2. So essentially, in this case, the color represents the fraction of people that is using geolocated geo tweets. So, uh, of course, we are talking about uh, the order, or the, um, something of the order of one percent, or even a little less. Okay, uh, and the the question is that actually, as you can see, there is a huge uh, di division between uh, uh, Germany and uh, East and uh, the rest of the of the countries, uh, and this this usually uh, something that tells you that actually there is a, um, a difference of the perception about uh, privacy. Uh, so the because the users are the ones that have to actually activate this uh, this question, and you ask every time that you are going to do a tweet if you really want to be geolocalized. Okay, so um, the, let's say for the people to do this, uh, what has to happen is that they have to agree. And uh, they have to have a perception that they, they don't care about this uh, this kind of issue. So, uh, or at least, at least to share the data. No? So, and of course, they, in in these countries, in the east, in this block especially, they have had a very bad uh, experience in the past with this question. So, the perception of privacy is a much more uh, contingent uh, issue. No? So, but okay. I mean, once you know that, you know that there are differences uh, regionally, and uh, you correct by that. You could say, okay, I've, I observe here uh, so many people traveling from, I don't know, from Hamburg to Palma. And uh, uh, since there are some f so much fraction of the population in Hamburg that uh, tweets uh, geolocated, this means that our our uh, flow of people has to be rescaled to uh, to gain back to the numbers. Of course, this rescale, rescale factor is very different, and this is what you see in every area of, of Europe. Okay, so once you have had that into account, you can do the next. The next step and is this question, which is the comparison between uh, um, something that has been measured in, in the surveys and the data that you are obtaining. Okay, so what we did in, in here is to um, accumulate the flows at the country level. Okay, and I think that the, the, the name that you have in here is the destination, the final destination uh, of the country of the flow. And uh, uh, what we are comparing is uh, the number of trips the uh, measure. Uh, in this case, by in millions uh, in the service at the Euro level of Eurostat, and the number of, tri of trips that we observe with uh, with Twitter. As you can see, I mean, of course, uh, well, first of all, this is a log-log plot, eh? so uh, don't get scared by the <laughs> dispersion. It's much smaller. This is the relative error, okay? And uh, um, the question here is that, as you see, there is a cloud, and this is diagonal, so this will be the, the perfect match, and the, the points are not so far far away. So that means that just looking at the at the tweets and the flows that we measure with that, and rescaling with the uh, the information about the penetration at origin. We are able more or less to see uh, something that gets close to the to the final uh, flows measure with Eurostat, which is a very different procedure because it takes uh, it uh, from from service. Okay, so then the next um, well, actually we should go in the direction. Okay, in the next we did the same, but this in this case we were comparing um, the nights uh, um, the measure, uh, let's say the the nights in hotels and and in this this kind of uh, uh, establishments uh, uh, in the different touristic areas and the, the flows that we were observing. And in this case, um, of course, the, there is a difference, there is a mismatch that is given by uh, the fact that uh, actually the bookings are here, these are the, the tweets uh, flows. So what happens is that uh, we are overestimating the values, okay? And this overestimation is also related to the fact that uh, some of these nights are not spent in hotels. So essentially, uh, these, these bookings are only considering hotels, but uh, of course we know that there are some other things like uh, uh, Airbnbs, uh, Home Away, and all other industry that is also there producing more, uh, I mean, 
or given, uh, the say, uh, hosting to these people that is uh, over here overestimating. Okay, so once we have that, and uh, we have certain confidence that the things is going well, so the next, the next question is to uh, get some further information on this. No? So uh, here you have um, the, all, the, all the European areas and, and then the number of visitors that they are receiving according to these um, uh, sort of measurements. Um, I, this is kind of very, very recent, so I would really like to, <laughs> to uh, reanalyze it, but just to tell you that at least uh, in, in Spain we are doing more or less okay, as you will say later, because actually this is this coincides also with uh, what we get in service. So essentially Catalonia is a region that uh, typically gets a larger number of tourism, and uh, um, then the islands and, and Andalusia come uh, behind. No? Um, just to, to show you how this uh, looks like, I mean, you can also um, measure flow, uh, the flows country by country, and then you get this this kind of uh, of uh, of uh, map fl uh, of flow charts and these kind of things, but then most more important than this, uh, these ones are more a little more quantitative. So in this case, what we are looking is whoops, uh, this one um, is the different regions of Spain and the different countries of, of origin of these uh, of these uh, tourists. So as you can see, uh, you can actually do a kind of um, a diagram or a histogram of what is the, the, the main uh, origin of the visitors. And remember that we here we are not talking about the visitors. I mean, of course, I'm putting this at the level of country because of convenience, otherwise this will be a big mess. But we can say also within these countries where they are coming from, okay? So because, for instance, in, in Mallorca, when I have been talking to the, to these, uh, to the authorities, the local authorities about uh, this, uh, and the ones that are uh, related to statistics, typically they tell you, yes, we know by survey that so many uh, of the visitors are German, so many are, are British, and so on and so on. But of course, the, the part that you are missing is, well, yes, German, Germany is a big country, so where from in Germany? You know? So because <laughs> maybe uh, you want to target, uh, I don't know, new uh, campaigns of, of publicity or things like that, you may uh, need to know that because uh, it's better that you focus on the lander that uh, you are missing, for instance. No? Okay, so this, this is the kind of uh, results that you can obtain with these tools. Uh, this was another example just to show you that actually we were not only, I mean, of course I am in Mallorca, so we were focused on the Balearic Islands, but uh, this one is the same uh, done for uh, Tuscany. Okay, so uh, once you, you have the access, once you have the tools, it's very easy to extrapolate this to the different parts of Europe with the advantage that you are doing it in a relatively homogeneous way. No? So uh, this will give you uh, a view. And uh, well, I mean, this is the, uh, sorry. Uh, this, in this in here you have the summer versus winter uh, issue that also came out in, uh, in Sunday discussion before. Tuscany actually doesn't suffer that so much as, uh, as uh, you in Croatia or we in, uh, in the Balearic Islands because uh, in, in the case of the Balearic Islands these, these two bars between red and, and blue that are summer and winter uh, are also a factor two, three many, many, most, most of the times. Okay? Uh, okay, so um, then the next st step, in, and I finish with this, is to look inside the, the area where you are interested and see how these people is moving because of what I was telling you. No? So uh, you can really estimate the flows, and this is the island of Mallorca, and the other one is Menorca. Oops. Uh, let's see in this one. Okay, so the big one is Mallorca, the, the small one is Menorca, and you can see in this case uh, Dutch uh, German people uh, traveling inside because you can separate also the mobility by nationality, no? And this means also that you could also look at uh, uh, locals or residents. I don't have the map here, but I, I also have a map, and the differences with the different uh, tourists and the different uh, tourists from different uh, locations. No? Uh, this is the same for uh, uh, British people in in German in in Mallorca, and uh, there are some differences, but not in this big uh, picture so actually you should uh to, to see the difference, you have to focus a little a little further, and then you see that uh, there is a different areas of concentration of the two types of tourism uh, in the in the islands, and this is what what you will see in this map. So, and finally, for instance, this is uh, another one, another example. This is the uh, Ibiza and, and Formentera, and these green lines are the the mobility of uh, Italian tourists. Uh, okay, so most of them are essentially going to Ibiza, which is this one. They visit a little the the, the other side of the island, and then of course they they go to Formentera, usually in a in a day trip. This is the typical the typical thing. Uh, but with this kind of tools, you could also measure a little the, the, the global picture and the global flows. No? Uh, okay, so in 
with this, uh, we I finish. I mean, uh, this is this is a very preliminary th uh, work because actually, uh, let's say when when we discuss about uh, showing the the results, we are still cooking them, so we are still in the oven. But um, well, I, already the preliminary results seems very very interesting and, and quite good. No, so and uh, I'm trying to. I mean, let's, I hope that you have convinced that actually this big data provides uh, some useful information about tourist intelligence that that can be used, uh, even when we talk about public data. Okay, I mean. Um, I have to look at, the, uh, at how the mobile phone data is, and of course it's much better. So <laughs> this will give you an idea that actually you can go even deeper with the mobile phone data when you look at a single destination, because the question in there is that um, in that, that the information will be limited to a certain area, not not to the full Europe. Uh, but uh, at the level European level, you can even go with this uh, public information. The, the question that this is, uh, um, uh, I mean, of course, it has some value for uh, for tourism, you know, so, uh, and especially for, for businesses, they say, to know which is the origin of the people, and maybe to know something about uh, the satisfaction or not, even though that's much harder because you got to get into semantic analysis. Uh, but uh, it's very, very uh, useful, or it should be very, very useful for uh, public managers, which is the ones that are, have to, uh, like for instance, in, the, in our islands, the ones that have uh, are in charge of, of the transportation system, uh, also in charge of uh, uh, the medical and, and, and health uh, issues, and uh, the ones that have to provide water and, uh, and attention to these uh, people that is over the territory during the summer and then of course it's better if you know where they are or they may be you know, so that uh, that uh, to be surprised by these questions and well i mean these results uh, allow to plan uh, the demands and uh, on services and, and on transportation that you may have and to check um, also where you can have concentrations of uh, of uh, people and of course uh, this this uh, also quantify the the impact that you may have in the in the environment like for instance uh, just before coming here there was a discussion about the the fact that in the summer in Mallorca we went over the limits on pollution and uh, then when they tell you well the origin of this is probably cars maybe the rental car should be electrical well yes <laughs> or no but, but who knows I mean the question is uh, where was this uh, uh, limits of pollution going uh, I mean where, where was the concentration of pollution uh, are these uh, produced by locals or are, is, this, is it produced by uh, by the combination of, of uh, tourists or only by tourists so the question is if you want to, to bring one of these measures like for instance uh, imposing electric cars in, in renting uh, well it can be a good idea but uh, of course you have to make sure that actually this is the the impact was produced by tourists and not by by locals no? okay so what well, this was uh, everything and thank you thank you very much